Watch this. It's specifically spelled out in state code. You want to represent a specific area? You have to live in that specific area. So when one Boise City Councilwoman was forced to find another place to live, the city must now find another to fill her seat. We find out what was known and what happens now. Public safety is taking the front seat in Governor Little's proposed budget. More money doesn't necessarily fix a problem, but the governor and law enforcement say it's a large part of keeping people safe. Oh sure, need is the mother of invention, but sometimes you just need to do something that requires little ingenuity. Need eggs? Get chickens. The city of Gooding has seen the light with the heavy cost of this grocery staple. Minutes before last week's Boise City Council meeting, council members learned they would gavel in without one of their regulars. Lisa Sanchez says she found out she had to move out of her North End rental home the day after Thanksgiving. Says she was given five weeks to move from a place she's lived for more than 10 years. When she found out, Sanchez says she checked with Boise City staff and Ada County Elections Office to see if she couldn't find a place to live in that same district. And you can imagine how tough that might be in Boise's North End. How would that affect her spot on the council? Well, apparently a lot. Last Friday, we learned, late Friday, we learned her seat had been vacated because while she found a place to live, it was not within the district that elected her. In that same meeting last week, Holly Woodings was elected as council president, which means she will have a big role in what happens with that former Sanchez seat. Council President Woodings spoke with Joe Paris. A week ago, Boise City Council, it was a very memorable meeting. We just learned that uh, council member Sanchez may no longer be a legal resident of the district she was elected in. For that reason, now former council member Lisa Sanchez was absent from the meeting. The major meeting also included the election of a new council president. Do you accept the nomination? Madam Mayor, I accept the nomination. With that, Holly Woodings became the new president of Boise City Council. The council now short one member. It's a lot different than I thought it was going to be. Um, the policy discussions that we've been having are not the ones I was expecting to be having this week. What policy discussions <laughs> are you guys having this week? Um, the you know big thing has been uh, former council member Sanchez and if she has vacated her position on Boise City Council um, and so we've been getting to the answers on what that is and what the path could be moving forward. And do you have an answer as of today? I do, yeah. According to Idaho state statute, it's very clear that Councilmember Sanchez, I believe inadvertently, vacated her position on Boise City Council by moving out of her district. We informed Lisa Sanchez that she had vacated her seat. Now that's an open seat and it will be up to the mayor to appoint somebody to fulfill the rest of that. Um, the rest of that term. Did City Council know that this was going on in the background? Um, I think we were all aware that Lisa was moving, um, but we didn't know where she was moving to and that's where the confusion came in. We found out about five minutes prior to last Tuesday's meeting that she had moved to an address that was outside of the district where she was elected. Does this seem like this is kind of just a messy, unintentional situation? I think it's completely unintentional. Um, and although it feels a little bit messy because it's a, a new thing for us, um, it's completely contemplated in state statute. And so it feels messy. The process has been a little bit messy, but the law is really clear. So for now, the mayor's office will work on a process to nominate a replacement for Sanchez. City Council will have to approve that nomination, but the person nominated needs to simply be an elector in District 3 and lived in that district for at least 30 days. Would it be possible that council, former Council Member Sanchez could move and be reestablished? Is, I guess is that a hypothetical that could happen? Um, yeah, absolutely. City Council is focused on getting to work, and Woodings is ready to set the tone as the new president. I think the biggest topic we have to tackle um, this year is the zoning code rewrite. It's been years in the making. We've heard um, so much feedback from our community, have really made some um, great strides in responding to that feedback that we've heard and crafting a zoning code rewrite that really reflects what we see as the future for our city. And so I'm very much looking forward to that. It's, um, I think, one of the most exciting projects that we've been able to do in my time on council. And I asked Council President Woodings about concerns about representation in the time being. Of course, with Lisa Sanchez not on the District 3 spot, there's nobody sitting there. So 
Council President Woodings did make a good point. There are at least two, exactly I should say, two at-large members of Boise City Council that they don't have to live in a specific district. They're at-large, but two of them, Brian, do actually live in that District 3 area. So there's no concern that the people of District 3 won't have any representation on City Council for now. Okay, so considering that at-large position, or two of them, mm -hmm. Could there be a path back for Sanchez back to the council? So there's a few different options that are hypothetical possibilities. Number one, kind of what we talked about with Council President Woodings, if hypothetically Lisa Sanchez found a spot in District 3, moved back into the district and then was there for 30 days, she'd be eligible to be chosen by the mayor's office to refill that role. Another thing we want to keep an eye on, though, is that Elaine Clegg, longtime council member, former council president, she will be leaving the Boise City Council in True. February. She has an at-large seat. So the mayor's office will have another opportunity in about a month to also fill that role, considering everything goes the way it's supposed to. So it's possible that council former council member Lisa Sanchez could end up back on the Boise City Council. There are a few different paths. Um, if it doesn't happen now in the near term, again, there are elections coming up and she could run. There are options. All right, thank you very much, Joe. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the several pillars put forth by Governor Brad Little in his State of the State address and one of the keys to a successful society, that would be public safety. Looking into Governor Little's proposed budget, you can see a large focus of his public safety agenda is to refund police, not defund, but refund police, actually provide more funding to police departments. We've talked about the law enforcement labor shortage and how it's impacted service throughout the Treasure Valley. And if the complicated equation involves wages over the cost of living plus the cost of training and equipment, well, then the solution is more money. And the benefiting agencies say Governor Little is right about that. Here's Andrew Bartline. The hardest days often teach the most. Mall shooting that occurred at the Boise Mall in, in October of 2021, we recognized immediately that we didn't have some of the equipment that we needed. Idaho State Police Lieutenant Colonel Bill Gardner puts what he learns on a list. One of those is a, is a ballistic tactical vest that, that our trooper can hurry up and throw on and then run in. Because these hard days are becoming more common. The many protests that our troopers responded to th uh, at the Capitol building and, and different areas throughout the state. Our troopers are not issued a chest protector or riot gear of any kind. It's an issue Governor Brad Little is now trying to resolve with his proposed budget. He aims to spend $200,000 per ISP trooper for safety equipment. We recognized quickly that our troopers were at a disadvantage in regards to that. When we brought that to their attention, the governor's office was very quick to recognize that, that this is a need that, uh, this, that every state trooper needs to have in, uh, as they do their job. But people to do the job are needed too. To strengthen recruitment and retention, the governor plans to increase ISP trooper pay by 10%. Oh, it's massive. Just just so that ISP can try to stay competitive with uh, the other agencies that are that are also trying to hire police officers. Um, yeah, it's the same pool of people that, that we're all trying to find. But for most agencies, that pool of candidates can be stagnant. We canceled some academies um, and basically everything that we could do in order to reduce costs over the course of the fiscal year. Post Administrator Brad Johnson says his division is responsible for training most Idaho law enforcement agencies. Training is one of our primary missions and we take that very seriously. And when we're unable to do that uh, in the manner that we should, uh, nobody enjoys that. Including the governor's office. With that additional revenue, it'll be sufficient uh, to, to meet our training needs through the next uh, 18 months. The proposed budget aims to give Post more than $1 million. The funds are intended to balance an uneven budget through a period of high inflation rates. It's a significant cost for us, and when those costs double or, uh, or go up 30 to 35 percent, that's something that we simply can't uh, absorb. The added funds would increase Post's budget by roughly 10 percent. Hopefully the legislature will approve it and we can get continue on with our mission. <laughs> Because on the hardest days, you definitely have to be somebody who can adapt to change. Agencies, including ISP, need their people in the best position. Idaho has always been very, very supportive of, of law enforcement, and so that's just that's one of the things personally I'm grateful for. Now, when that ISP trooper we spoke with started at ISP 25 years ago, he said 1,000 applicants were looking for jobs at any given time at ISP. Hmm. That figures now between 100 to 200. Fewer people want to be troopers than before, despite a growing need in a growing state. And there is some nuance here, Brian, with these funds as well. You know, $1 million going toward post. That's going to be split over two fiscal years. So the rest of this fiscal year and then the upcoming fiscal year. And we kind of break down that nuance on our website at KTVB.com. So we'll kind of explain exactly what that money means exactly and how it's divided up.
Okay, so there is a shortage, though. So, I mean, I guess you got to get more money to kind of, in, I guess, attract some of these people to fill these positions. As you said, not many people are applying at this point. Yeah, I mean, it, they'll have 20 to 30 openings at any given point. So right. if you have 100 people applying, you could feasibly fill those 30 positions. Sure. But wouldn't you want the Idaho State Police to take the best 30 out of 1,000 rather than the best 30 out of 100? That so that, that's point, kind yeah. of it, is you want the best possible person in the best possible scenario best possible position to do the best possible job. They say money can solve this. They keep uh, talking to the governor about it and his proposal. He's uh, looking to put money toward their direction. Everybody's got an idea what to do with that surplus, that one and a half billion dollar surplus. So maybe this is one of those avenues. All right, thank you very much, Andrew. We've all seen the prices of eggs stacking up. So the Gooding City Council is changing things up in an effort to save people some money. It's a temporary plan that is seeing some long-term results. All right, you want to weigh in on our stories today? You can always send us a text message to the number 208-321-5614. And as always, keep it clean, concise, and clever helps. Oh, also, include your name in the hashtag the 208. We'll be sharing some of them at the end of today's show. Have you seen the price of eggs lately? We certainly have. At Albertsons right now, I just checked, basic dozen eggs, five and a half bucks. A little more than a year ago, the average price for a dozen eggs, less than a buck 75. So we've done some stories on this over the last couple of weeks and why they are so high right now, the prices that is. The main reason, the bird flu running rampant through several egg farms last year. It was detected in almost every state. U.S. Department of Ag reports 43 million egg laying hens had to be put down because of that disease in 2022. And some of that avian flu actually showed up in Gooding County here in Idaho, which also happens to be where the city of Gooding just lifted a ban on backyard chickens. Why? Well, one has to look no further than the age old question. Well, the age old chicken egg question. In this case, the chickens came after they saw the price of eggs. It's written right in the Gooding City Code. Keeping certain animals at your house within city limits is a public health nuisance. Ugh. Certain animals like a horse, a cow, a goat, a sheep, or any chicken. That is, until now, at least with chickens. Because of the cost of eggs, and they are so high, it's unbelievable. It's $4 for a dozen eggs. So Mayor Hauser and the city council agreed. Goodians could lower their grocery bill by raising chickens. But only four, and none of those rowdy roosters. And that the chickens can only be kept for the purpose of egg productions. What other purpose is there? I have no idea. <laughs> That's what the ordinance says. <laughs> well, the, the resolution does not permit the slaughter of chickens. So that's probably what it is. So how did this happen? And it all started with one guy. Yes, just one guy. That guy. Are you there? I am. Are you? Is Melvin Swanson. I do restoration work. A Goodian who sold his wife on an idea after shopping. My wife and I actually went to the grocery store there in, in town and 
we usually buy, you know, the five dozen large eggs there. And they were like 28 bucks for five dozen of them. And we were just like, holy cow. I think you mean pious poultry. Anyway, last July, Melvin was given a one-year trial run, a chicken run, to see if he could keep them without complaints from his neighbors. How does it feel to be the kind of uh, canary in the coal mine in this thing? This is a little nerve-wracking, actually. I mean, <laughs> you, you know, if we screw up, it does it for everybody. Well, he hasn't so far. In fact, he's shown other people what's possible. It's an Powerful people. Now. Actually, I've been kind of thinking about doing it myself. And that resolution? that bestowed Melvin his brood has been broadened to everyone else. It's a step forward. And you took that first step. Yeah. Everything goes according to plan. Nobody complains. Chickens in the city of Gooding will be from now on. Uh-huh. Just as long as we know who's doing it. Yeah, you got to check in. You can't just raise chickens willy-nilly around the city of Gooding. Melvin says he now has about 140 eggs in his fridge. He told us when he called around to nearby cities last summer, he was surprised to learn Gooding was one of the two that didn't allow backyard birds. He found it was possible in Sun Valley, Haley, Twin Falls, Wendell. They're all okay with it, which is shocking considering, as he says, in Gooding, quote, we're out here in the middle of nowhere. Mayor Hauser told us of the 3,200 Goodians, I think that's what they're called, Goodians, right? About five homeowners have let them know they will be raising chickens in their backyard. So, yes, the egg came first, as in the price of them led to more people having chickens. There were days where we thought we wouldn't make
make it out. The reflection makes that picture even twice as nice. A beautiful shot from Skycam 7 right now. I guess we could call this golden hour. Nice to see the sunshine, the blue skies today. It was a little closer to average for this time of year in comparison to the winter warmth we've been experiencing for the first half of January. But now we're about to be reminded that it is still winter and really midway through winter. Our temperatures dropping off into the low and mid 20s as we head into the overnight hours with mostly clear skies. But then as the sun comes up tomorrow, the clouds will be on the increase as the day goes on. That breeze today was a little bit bitter too, wasn't it? Highs tomorrow right around 40 degrees. That is right on par with average for this time of year, even for our mountain areas. 24 for a high in Stanley and Haley, 30 degrees for a high in McCall tomorrow. We do have a winter weather advisory that's been issued by the National Weather Service in Boise earlier today. It will go into effect tomorrow at 2 p.m. and stay in effect until Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Oregon stretching up through Baker City all the way through the Weezer River Basin, the I-84 corridor including the Treasure Valley down through the Western Magic Valley, and that is for winter driving conditions. Very generally speaking, one to three inches of snow on the way. I think that three inch amount, though, will favor more at the higher elevations. We're really looking for maybe more one to two inches through the Treasure Valley. You can see the snow showers starting to enter into the picture as we get into late tomorrow evening. This is 11 p.m. according to this forecast model, continuing into the overnight hours. So if you go to bed early on Wednesday night, you might wake up on Thursday to a little bit of a surprise. I think most of that accumulation will be on grassy surfaces and car tops and patio furnitures, the barbecues that are covered, uh, but not as much on those main roadways and thoroughfares. Still into Thursday morning's commute, it might be a little slower, it might be a little slick. I would plan for some extra time. Certainly wake up a little bit earlier with our Wake Up Idaho team so that you can see what those current conditions are. But here are the snow totals that we're looking for. As I mentioned before, anywhere from about one to two inches through the Treasure Valley more slushy and wet on those main treated roads up through the mountains an inch or two and then down through the Owyhee Mountains and southern Twin Falls County could be a little bit closer to those pockets of three perhaps even four you add a little elevation you get a little more snow seven day forecast for Boise showing that first alert weather banner on Thursday just keeping a very close eye on that Thursday morning commute then drying out and cooling off even below average temperatures expected but with a little more sunshine through the weekend and into next week. You can follow this forecast at KTVB.com. Okay, so normally we reserve the not so Idaho brand for things that are very un Idaho like people being rude to one another, finding some trash in the streets or in campgrounds, of course. Broncos and Vandals getting along. What's up with that? Today, though, it has a different meaning. It's a tweet from the Food Network. Maybe you saw it over the last few days. Promoting one of their shows caught our attention over the weekend. It says, here it is. A Hawaiian restaurant in Idaho is in bad shape when Robert Irvine arrives, as is always the premise of his show. Let's see if he and his team can work their magic and bring a little island paradise to the Midwest. Let me repeat that. Let's see if he and his team can work their magic and bring a little island paradise to the Midwest. The Midwest? Idaho, right? Food Network social media manager missed the day in geography when they went over where in the U.S. Idaho actually is? To be fair, we did some researching, though, because it turns out there are four other places in the United States that bear the Idaho name. There's Idaho, New York, which is east of Buffalo. There's Idaho, Pennsylvania, believe it or not, northeast of Pittsburgh. Maybe you've heard of that. Never have. There's Idaho, Ohio, conveniently, which isn't a confusing place at all. That's east of Cincinnati. Then there's an Idaho, Tennessee. I didn't know that either, which is just a few miles from the Alabama border. And then there's Idaho Springs, Colorado, a cute and quaint little mountain town west of Denver. So a little bit closer, sure, still not the Midwest. And while the only Idaho in the Midwest is a tiny unincorporated hamlet in rural Pike County, it is in fact not home to the restaurant featured in Chef Irvine's show. That's in Idaho. Ohio. In reality, the show went to Island Kind Grinds. It was in Napa, more than 2,000 miles from anywhere in the Midwest. That episode called Clueless in Idaho, touchy, I get it. It was filmed back in May of 2022. Who's Clueless? I gotcha. The restaurant was renamed, by the way, Aloha Island Grills. So maybe you've seen it in downtown Napa. As of August, it was under new ownership, and according to the Secretary of State's office, they're still open. I called today, but just has a new name.
All right, getting into your comments on the final moments of the show. Let's get right to them. James in Boise says it's surprising Governor Little wants to spend $200,000 per officer on safety gear, but there's no talk of any similar actions to support teachers. The governor's supposed number one priority or to help the homeless or to address the nursing shortage. Well, actually, he did address teacher pay in his state of the state address. He wants to raise that. I'm not sure if you mentioned homeless or the nursing shortage. So Good point there on those two. Lisa Sanchez has a lot of responsibility being a city council person, and you want us to believe she had no idea she moved out of her district, says Sean. That's not the point. She did know she was moving out. She was trying to figure out if there was something that could be done to kind of still keep her seat, maybe something temporary or something. We didn't say she didn't know she was moving out of her district. They love the idea of raising chickens. Grew up with chickens in my backyard. My question is how much it costs. Well, about 1500 bucks, according to Melvin. That's how much he caught. It cost him 